Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing a little bit of a speed run just because it's something that I personally thought I might uh, use in the future here. Basically, going on vacation soon, kind of need to keep track of a bunch of different things we need to buy. Can't be bothered to use Excel because that would be, uh, you know, way too cringe and not, not good for videos. So instead, I would like to make a little shopping list where I have an updated total for each of the different categories of things we need to buy for the road trip as well as a running total. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is write the Rails side of things, which is going to handle the uh, categories and the products, as well as like the migrations and stuff, set up the actual server. And then in the background, I have a prompt going to GPT-4. I've tried this a couple times just to make sure it gives me something close. And this is, because it's GPT-4, this is gonna run pretty slow. Uh, so while this is running, I'm going to uh, just work on the application. And my hope is this will give me the JavaScript so I don't have to worry about that. It does mean the JavaScript's probably going to be pretty ugly, uh, but, you know, it's for a personal project in the speedrun. So I thought this might be a fun way to do things. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start the timer here. And I think it's that button. And then I'll go ahead and I'll run this command and I'll move this over here. Uh, and that can run on the other screen while we do this. And then we can go ahead and do a Rails new video. And we'll do a dash J E S build dash C of bootstrap. We can go ahead and CD into the video and we can run a code dot just to get all of that started. So this should take care of most of it. And again, uh, GPT is gonna be running pretty slowly. I have a second prompt working for a cleanup command. Uh, but the the main one is is the one that you saw right there. The reason why I like doing it like this is just because uh, you know in a real world you'd have multiple people working on the same application, and sometimes you get code back that's not entirely great. So it's fun to just like get this little side project going. You get the code, and then you take a look at the code, and you see if it works, see if it makes sense, and then you just go from there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by generating our categories. So we're gonna say Rails G scaffold. We're gonna give each uh, category just a name for now go ahead and run that now the product is the kind of tricky part so for this we're also going to use a scaffold we're going to say rails g scaffold product i'm going to give each product a uh i guess a a name it should have a uh price so well, yeah it should have a price and i i'm not entirely sure what we should make the price let's see what gpt has come up with for that Maybe they have a good idea. Uh, the price is a decimal for them. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll say decimal. Again, I'm not really totaling this for the sake of like, you know, using a Stripe checkout or anything. So this seems fine. You'd probably want to use like an integer and then just multiply by 100 to, to simulate a, a uh, decimal if you were using an actual checkout uh, thing. Uh, but okay, that takes care of that. Uh, we have the name, the price. Let's do a purchased of type boolean and actually before this what i want to do is just a url of type string as well uh, so i can save a url if that is necessary and then the last thing we need is a category colon uh, references something like that let me just scroll out a little bit move this down so there you go you can see that we'll go ahead and we'll run this uh, i forgot to do a rails g scaffold product why is this not generate field price uh, Oh, because I didn't spell it right. <laughs> Decimal. Great speed run so far. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now I have to come into the gem file, and I always keep this in my notes. So we'll just go ahead and we'll do this. Uh, we're going to do the form in gem to fix my Ruby 3.2 issue. Then we're going to do a gem for faker. So we're going to be using the faker gem for some uh, placeholder stuff. Uh, so we can go ahead and hit enter on this. I don't know why the formatter insists on doing that every time and then immediately after it's fine with it, but whatever. Next, let's come into our DB and our seeds. Inside of our seeds, uh, we pretty much just want to do something like this. Let me F11. I'm going to control plus as well. Uh, we want to do a categories list, which we can just for now do some placeholders. Uh, let's do like, I don't know, groceries. I'm not using this exact list. Uh, but we got groceries, electronics, and let's go with like clothing maybe just for the sake of having something you now do categories dot each do cats and then we'll do a uh, cat equals category dot create yep category dot create 
with a name uh, equal to category, or I guess a name equal to cat, right? And then we can do a, uh, or maybe I should change this. This should be a category and this should be a category. We'll make this one a cat. And then we can do a cat.products.create. And for this, we'll do a name of faker colon colon. And I think it should be commerce. There it is. Commerce dot product underscore name with a price of faker commerce price. You just go ahead and hit comma and enter on all of these. Uh, so that should work. Now we can set the purchased to be a, uh, we could either do that or we could just do a true false dot sample. And then for the URL, we can use faker internet URL. That should give us that. Uh, and now down here, I think we have to do an end and that should work. So let's go ahead and let's run a rails db colon migrate. Let me check in on chat GPT. Uh, okay, that looks good. Uh, let me make sure it generates the JavaScript for us. I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, so let me just, okay. Uh, now what I wanna do is, uh, we have the the migrations. Let's do a Rails DB colon seed. Make sure I didn't mess that up. Uh, we have undefined method products. That's fine. We can come into our app, our models, and come into our category model and our product model. In our uh, let's see now, in our product model, we're going to have to do a couple things. Uh, we want to do two scopes. We'll do a scope for purchased, where purchased is true, and then we want to do a scope for remaining oops scope for remaining and this is going to be where purchased is false uh, inside of our category this needs to belongs to a uh, product right that takes care of that uh, or no this has to has many products sorry my brain's really not working right now uh, so that takes care of that our category is done our products done our seed is done hopefully if we come up here and run a rails db colon seed uh, uninitialized constant faker. I did a typo, of course. Uh, seeds faker f a k e r. There we go. Run a db seed again. There we go. That worked. Now let's come into our config and our routes.rb. Inside of our routes here, what we want to do is, uh, well, we're going to have to do something like a remote update. If I'm looking at this GPT thing, right, let's do a uh, patch for products slash ID slash inline update because I wanted it to do inline updates. Uh, so let's see, we'll do a oops, a products inline update as inline update product. That seems fine. Uh, and that should be good. Now let's set the root to be the uh, categories and the index. I'll do that. That works. Uh, let me now come over to our, well, let's go ahead and let's do a bin slash dev real quick. Make sure everything's working over to localhost port 3000. Okay, so we have our list of categories. Each category here just has a name and we should have our list of products. So let's go ahead and let's come into our views our products and our products index. Okay, so in here, this is, or not our products index, sorry. We wanna come into our categories index, or categories index. And here we're gonna be using some of the stuff GPT has generated for us. So let's go ahead and let's test this out. Uh, below, uh, maybe below the categories, or actually we can just get rid of the categories. We don't need that. I'm actually just gonna get rid of all of this. Let's start with the total price. Uh, that seems good. It also has the remaining price uh, and the number purchased, a different order. Um, but maybe what we do is we move the total price down. Well, let's leave it up here. Uh, we have the total purchased uh, with the remaining. That seems fine. This is going to look a little bit ugly. Let's maybe change this to like an H4, something like that, maybe. That seems fine. Okay. Uh, iterates through the categories. That makes sense. Uh, the category name, this also makes sense. Uh, so we're grabbing the category name and then we're saying the number to currency for the category dot products that sum of the price, that seems fine. This number to currency is okay. Uh, and then it creates the table. So let's just go ahead and let's do this. 
Uh, it did miss the URL, so let's go ahead and let's change this. And let's do the URL, uh, I guess, after the uh, purchased. We'll just do URL, something like that. And then we have the product page. That seems fine, TH. Then we got the T body. Uh, T body, we're gonna change. We're gonna do a T body with a data dash controller equal to products. I'm just gonna dump all of its uh, JavaScript into a uh, stimulus controller. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Rails G stimulus, let's call this products. And we can do a bin slash dev again to start our server. Come over here, uh, nine and a half minutes. We're doing okay. Uh, and the actual category stuff here seems fine as well. So I'm just gonna copy the rest of this uh, up to the T body, this seems fine. Uh, and now we should be good to go. I don't know why it generates, it does this sometimes, it generates like the stimulus stuff and then it just completely ignores it. Uh, but that's fine. So we have the content editable, which is good. That means it's gonna be inline editable with the data attribute, data URL. So it does have some data attributes, uh, but no targets or anything. That's fine though. We'll just use whatever it gives us. Uh, so what we have to do now is come into our controllers because I think this is gonna require these things to be declared in the categories controller, which it did declare for us, so that's good. Uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll change this. So we'll say the categories is now the category dot include products. That makes sense. Let's do the total price. That makes sense. And let's do the purchased and remaining as well. Okay, so that works. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else in here that needs to happen. So we'll just close that. Uh, now let's come into our JavaScript and see if we can get this working. We'll go into app, uh, JavaScript controllers, products controller. Okay, so this is where I actually have to pay attention. So let's just copy this function by function. First thing, format to currency, uh, new international number format, ENUS, currency USD. That I mean, sure, I guess if that's a thing, then that works. Uh, next we have this, which I'm just gonna copy this whole section. Okay, so this is a query selector all for dot editable, which we have uh, editable classes, okay. For each editable, editable event listener blur. Okay, so when you make a change to the editables, we're good. Uh, the model, the attribute, the URL, which I'm assuming is coming from here. Inline product update path. Uh, then we have the value. Uh, we have the uh, attribute equals price. Uh, parses the float. Okay, sure. We got the data. Um, I'm just gonna assume this is right. We'll see when we test it. Uh, form data, does the append. Okay, CSR of token, that's all standard stuff as far as I know. Credentials are fine. Response, uh, if there's an error, just do an alert. Sure, if the attribute equals price, set the text equal to format currency and then do a location reload. I don't know if this is necessary if it's already reloading, uh, but okay. And then we got another one here, which is this whole section. Uh, and then we can do this. Okay, purchased uh, on event listener change. When you change the checkbox, makes sense. Does the data, does the purchased, does the content, does the response, uh, results, alert, and then refreshes. Okay, so this seems fine. I'm getting lightheaded. Uh, let's go ahead and let's refresh the page. Oh boy, okay. so. Uh, this looks right. We got our total price, our purchased, and our remaining. Our groceries are zero. Groceries are zero. This one has stuff. Okay, so we really only have three items. So we have a 8549 for this grocery list, which includes this intelligent linen gloves. Oh, and I can actually inline edit this. So let's try to change this to intelligent linen boots. I'm going to click off and then refresh, and hopefully this doesn't stay. Okay, so let's see. Let's hit enter here and scroll down. Intelligent linen boots. Oh, you know what? I bet the reason for that is, oops, I, I have to stop the server. Uh, we didn't create that route. So let's come into our products controller and down here. Now it's giving me a route already. So I wonder, um, yeah, okay. So I got an inline update. So let's do this. Uh, inline update at product equals product that fine. That makes sense. Product update with product params and the product params are already here because we have the ability to create products individually. Okay, cool. So let's try this now. I'm going to come over here and refresh. Uh, hopefully this will work. Make sure because Brave is just not a good browser these days, at least for me. 
Uh, some someday, please. You're you're eating into the time, Brave. Oh, I have to start the server. I'm blaming Brave, and the the server is not even running. That's funny. Uh, okay, this time it's Brave's fault, though. Let's go ahead. Let's get this working. Okay, so let's come down here. Let's change this to Intelligent Linen Boots. I'm gonna click off, and now I'll refresh. That seems to be working. Uh, let me full screen this so you can see that I'm hitting refresh. Okay, I'm gonna uncheck this and hopefully that changes the total. Cool, so that's working. I can also refresh. Uh, the URL is not appearing, so we do have to do that. I'm gonna click this one. Uh, so it is refreshing with each, with each of these, I think, but that's fine again for product or for demo like this. Okay, live split just crashed, that's cool. Um, so that was about 14 minutes. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this again because I'm not really doing anything right now. So we're just gonna do whatever that 14 minutes was and start another one. Go ahead and refresh. Uh, okay, so that works. Let me click on this one and let me click on this one. Make sure all of these work. That seems fine. Okay, so that's all good. Uh, let's do the URL real quick though. Uh, so let's come into our app, our index. Inside of our index up here, we have the URL, which is below the purchased and the uh, product page. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say below the purchased. I'm gonna grab this one, I'm gonna paste this one in, and I'm gonna say for this, it is editable, content editable, model is product, data attribute is URL. Uh, that's fine. It has a data URL in it, that's okay. It has a number, this is not necessary. This needs to be the product.url. Go ahead and save that. Let's come over to here. Uh, does anything in here need to change with like the price? No, uh, this is fine. This is fine, I think. Uh, so let's just go ahead and let's test this. Let's refresh over here. It has a URL. I can click on it. I can change this to youtube.com refresh. Oh, was it actually that easy to fix something that chat GPT generated? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this because I think at this point we are pretty much done. So I was like, what? Let's say 14.30 and 1.30, so 15, 16 minutes. Uh, 16 minutes to get something like this. Now, don't get me wrong, this is this is absolutely ugly. However, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, it seems to do what I expected it to. Uh, and I mean, ChatGPT did a lot of the heavy lifting. I even just started using its code halfway through there. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty cool for, for what it is. Uh, again, it's it's one of those things I could just use like an Excel spreadsheet and probably makes a lot more sense, right? Uh, but it's always cool to make stuff like this on your own just as an exercise, see how, uh, how ChatGPT keeps up with stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful in some way uh, and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial. And if you're interested in the source code, as always, it's in the video description. Uh, but that's gonna do it for me. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video.